Hello, us, my online students of Religion 101. Uh, and Unit 2, Part 2 has been reviewed. And there, we looked at the question Eliade poses of whether there are people in the world who lack a sense of the sacred. And we discussed, and some agreed with Eliade, yes, a sacred cabin in the woods or grandma's knitting needles, for example. Could be examples of something sacred for one person, but would have no meaning for another person. Uh, some of you, on the other hand, thought that religious people are the only ones with a true sense of the sacred because they're focusing on the true reality, which that group of students thought, that's God, and God is sacred. So I left it all up to you to ponder all that. And uh, I referenced Packerism in Wisconsin as a focal point of the sacred for many in my state. And I think we could go on and on with soccer teams and the like around the planet. Uh, the other issue we examined this week were the three types of hierophanies of persons. Very few people use the term hierophany, but it means a manifestation of the sacred in our mundane realm. And we talked about sacred time, sacred places, sacred objects, and finally we focused in on sacred people. And in this case, we examined three of those. One was Moses, who represented the prophetic strain of sacred person. He does not speak for himself, but for Jehovah. And in fact, as some of you may know, he was prevented from entering the Holy Land because he claimed to do a miracle on his own power rather than channeling it through Jehovah. And Muslims feel the same way about Muhammad. Muhammad didn't perform any miracles uh, except through God's divine intervention. So the prophetic type of religion, the prophetic type of figure uh, is distinct from the mystical figure. And there we examine the Buddha and how it is that he doesn't teach or preach, rather, from the standpoint of a god outside this world, but rather representing the immanental, the divine is present all around us traditions uh, of India. The Buddha pointed within and, of course, practiced his famous uh, meditation on that fateful day for Buddhists when he attained nirvana and, believe it or not, the earth quaked and all the animals bowed their heads. Uh, so there's the mystical, the teacher, not the preacher. Finally, we looked at sacramental sacred persons and, of course, we focused in on Jesus Christ. Now, we can look at Jesus as the readings did tell us, uh, as my lectures told us. We can see Jesus as prophetic because he's certainly part of that Jewish prophetic tradition. However, he is also sacramental. And what this means is he is considered God himself. Sorry, I have to say him uh, to my women students. Uh, it is a him, alas, for the most part. And so Jesus Christ is God. And when Christians practice the Eucharist and eat the blood, uh, the body of Christ in the wafer, and drink the blood of Christ in the wine, then they are imbibing a divine substance, an elixir of immortality, as it was known to early Christians. There is, however, another sacramental religious tradition uh, figure, uh, also very well known, and that is Krishna. Jesus Christ and Krishna were both born of virgins, both born on December 25th. Uh, both of them died and were resurrected, However, their character of their religious personality is vastly different. Christ is filled with a social mission for the poor and represents love for the outcasts and the sinner, whereas Krishna represents supporting the caste system, and in particular, the warrior caste, protecting the Brahman caste's priestly privilege. And Krishna is a playboy, if you will marrying 16,000 maidens in one day, believe it or not. He had 280,000 children, believe it or not. But Krishna, like Christ, is considered the very incarnation or avatar of Vishnu. And thus, he too is sacramental, even though India's religions are immanental. 
here and now, everything is divine, not transcendental. That would be Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in particular. Then we also looked at the issue of the figure of the shaman in religions, how the shaman is that pivotal point uh, for a tribe. Not really the chief, in my opinion, but I'm biased because I teach religion. The shaman is that mediator between the profane world, the mundane world, and the sacred realm, whatever that is. Uh, and even if it's just a purely product of the consciousness, it's still real. And that's what I like to tell my more scientific atheist friends. Religions are real, even if you think they are fake, because millions, sometimes billions of people believe in them. So, the shaman is a part of the core human traditions of the planet, tribal religions, and indeed, uh, many of you mentioned all the things the shaman does. Healing, guiding the tribe, uh, processing children into adulthood through rituals, being seized by spirits against their will sometimes. And at the shaman level of the tribe, we often see women as shamans. We won't see that in the later big religions of the Axial Age, which all emerge in the middle of the 5th century BCE. And so, I had a student who looked at the priests, the rabbis, the ministers, uh, actually the clergy of any tradition, and saw them all as fakes compared to the shaman. It's all ritualized, it's institutionalized shamanism, the priest, the rabbi, and the minister. And they no longer are taken to going into trances. And generally speaking, they no longer perform the healings that are distinctive of a tribal shaman. So I'll leave that opinion to you if we've, those religions have evolved with the Buddhist monk and the like, or if society has devolved from a more natural, family-oriented kind of religion.